Fury FC Bantamweight Champion, Leomana Martinez. What's going on, man? Uh, how's life in uh, Texas? It's great, man. It's it's awesome. Everything's bigger in Texas, as they say. And uh, <laughs> it's it's cool to have things slowly but surely starting to open back up. Yeah, what what's it? What's you know what is it like being in that crop of fighters in Texas? Because it seems like a lot of guys right now at the moment are on the verge of getting signed by the major promotions, and and most of them are grouped up in Texas. Even recently, um, what's the dude from uh Houston, the heavyweight, Ike Ike Villanueva? Yeah, Ike Villanova. You know what I mean? Like guys like that. You know what I mean? They're right there. You're one of those guys. What's what's up with Texas, man? Is it just everybody's tough out there? I'm assuming so, man. We're all fighters, whether we were born and raised that way or it just came natural about us. It's, it's good to have that local friendly competition. And um, once you take it to that next level, it, it definitely shows, you know, for sure. But, um, yeah, it, it's it's awesome to see. And not only do you want to see yourself make it, but you want to see the uh, others around you as well, man. It, it helps you, right? Because – you see guys on the regional scene getting signed up and then you you're on the verge. That means, Hey, I'm, I'm very close then too. It's not like there's no light at the end of the tunnel. Exactly. Exactly. And once you surpass this regional level and you take it to that national level, then you know why you went through everything you did whenever you were in the regional level. And I'm glad to have gone through that experience and hopefully within these next few months, this contender series falls through and, um, I'll be able to showcase my my skill sets there. Now, you said everything is slowly getting back to normal. Uh, how long were you out of the gym for? It it wasn't too long. I know maybe a week or two, we were just kind of on edge. But as far as my training regimen went, I still was making sure to get my runs in. I was still making sure to get my strength and conditioning in. Of course, I couldn't quite spar and roll as I wanted to, but it wasn't too much of a gap for me. And... um now i'm right back on it it's cool man gives you a, a couple of weeks to heal your body right because when you're rolling and sparring you know you have those bumps and bruises continually happening exactly with this mma sport your your body definitely gets banged up and bruised up a lot so sometimes it needs that reset and it was nice to let my body go through that just kind of ease my mind and not have to worry about waking up at a certain time or having mm -hmm. to i guess eat a certain way slacked off on my dieting a bit but i'm back on now but uh yeah it was definitely a nice little reset and um body's great back to normal so we're, we're back on you've been on a tear man since you turned pro but i want to go to your second pro fight where you uh dropped a split decision at lfa7 it was a close fight there were some weird moments in that fight where you've been you were poked in the eye a few times you know there was some taunting uh, but overall, a good fight, an entertaining fight. What do you remember most about that night? I'd have to say it, it was a very emotional night for me. It was literally the day before my 21st birthday. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I had that in the back of my mind. And, oh, man, it's a lot of pressure because, of course, you not only want to celebrate the victory afterwards, but your birthday as well. And um, when in there, of course, like you mentioned, I got – poked in the eye a few times it threw me off my game a bit but i made sure to retract get back on and um just didn't happen to go my way that night but i think that was definitely and honestly a truly blessing in disguise because after that loss decision um who is my um coach now Coach Sosolis, he uh, seen me in the locker room, of course, obviously upset and down on myself. And he invited me to go train at Metro Fight Club. And since then, I mean, it's obviously paid off. And I've got five five TKO KOs under my belt, man. So the, so the major change was just switching gyms. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So originally, since I was four years old, I had been training at, at our karate school, my karate school, Bushiban. And... Um, once you hit a certain level at, at your gym, you know, there's nobody that can test you. And I think that's what I was definitely missing. So making that change to Metro and having killers on my side like Jacob Silva, Adrian Yanez, who are also going to train in the Contender Series, or I mean, uh, fight in the Contender Series, um, helped me push and grow. It just took me to the next level. I definitely elevated and my skill set went through the roof. So when you get to Metro, like you said, 
you level up, you have better training partners, the coaches are different. But what did you notice most about yourself, the changes that you were going through? The changes I went through, I definitely found out that I have that dog in me because, mm-hmm. man, it's it's a doghouse over there. You know, of course, it's controlled sparring. But like I mentioned and said, we push each other t- to the limits, man. And day in and day out, whether it's wrestling and jits or sparring, we're going to get the best out of each other. So me discovering that, man, I can actually go more rounds or I can actually go longer instead of training five minutes, we train six minutes, you know, with 30 second breaks in between. Oh, man, it's it's killer, man. It's awesome. You competed after that loss. You competed two more times, you know, for LFA. And uh, I felt like you were on your way to a title shot with that promotion. Why did you decide to switch promotions? Uh, I'm not sure if there was a little fallout between Houston and Legacy, but I don't think there was any talks of a show being put together soon. So Fury was asking if I wanted to. And of course, me being the fighter that I want that I am, I want I wanted to go out there and compete. So I hopped on the opportunity, and um, it's history since then, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You went over there to Fury, completely dominating the division. You pick up the bantamweight title last year, or in 2018, uh, winning your first belt. What does that signify for you? Sign- signifies a lot, man. You know, I've said it time and time again, and I'll say it as many times as I can. But nobody had me winning that fight, and just to go in there and win in the fashion that I did was crazy, man. And um, it definitely put me put me on spot for, for Texas MMA. And um, I'm glad I'm glad it ended that way and I got to finish the fight. But um, it meant the world to me, man, because training since four years old for a moment like that and to finally get that belt around my waist meant a lot. But ultimately, that's not the belt I want. You, I think you know which belt I want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Well, you know, five straight finishes after that, um, you know, for LFA and, and Fury, you got a belt. Um, outside of changing gyms and having all the sparring partners, the coaches, what has clicked for you the most inside the cage? Because I feel like that's the most important part. Man, just staying cool, calm and collective, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of fighters out there, they let their emotions get the best of them or they get, a, I guess you can say, trigger happy and, you know, for me, when I go in there, I like to calculate every shot I throw. Obviously, like to see what my opponent does. And as much film as I study on them prior, I know they're, they're, they can be a different fighter when they step in the cage. So as long as my mindset's there and I stay calm, like I mentioned, I'm going to find the opening and obviously finish them as I have been. Well, your finishes are all in the first round, except for your debut. Uh, are you, do you, how do you, do you get into the zone immediately or does it take you a little bit of time to kind of move around? Does it shake it out? Um, depends on, on how the fighter comes at me. I, for example, one fight for LFA, um, and Pat Militich was, I think, commentating it. He's like, oh, these fighters are coming out like sprinters out the gates. So that fight, I had to be, be ready to counter, be ready to slip, be ready to move other fighters. For example, um, when I fought my first fight for Fury, yeah, mm-hmm. it, he was a little bit taller. So, you know, I kind of would have chopped down the tree and then obviously went upstairs and finished it with a head kick. So for me in there, it's just all about timing, precise. And then, um, again, I'll find that opening and finish the fight. You were set to defend the title at Fury FC 43 March, early March. How much did that cancellation affect you? Man, I'm, I'm still in shock to this day about it i just couldn't wrap my wrap my mind around it and um i trained so hard for it and i knew if i if i or when i won that fight i was for sure gonna get that call up and um whether it was going to the contender series or going straight up but um me not being able to perform out there it's kind of upsetting um everything happens for a reason though you know so Who's to say I could have gotten injured or a little setback could have happened? Don't like to think that way, but that's the truth. And um, it's it was upsetting, but I'm over it now, and I'm just ready to look forward and face face whatever comes at me. 
What has uh, Fury said to you? Have they decided on uh, the next event that they're going to have, or is it just not even being t- discussed? I, I haven't quite kept in contact with them. My manager has. Um, and as far as my manager has been letting me know, we're going to compete in the Contender Series come August. So I'm just waiting on the exact date then and an opponent and um, just kick it up another gear. It's it's going to be hard to to level up and kick it up as much as I'm training right now, but it's, it's going to be turned up a lot more. What is the, the regimen you have right now? Even, even though it's somewhat on lockdown. Um, it, it varies on the day mm-hmm. and I like to listen to my body a lot. I feel like a lot of these fighters, they don't listen to their body and they try to push through the pain. And then obviously that results in them occurring with an injury. So I try my best to avoid that. Um, some days I'll wake up at 5 a.m., go run some stairs, of course, go run my miles. Daily, I run my three miles, Monday through Friday. Um, and then Monday, Wednesdays, we get our sparring in in the afternoon. Tuesday, Thursdays, we get our jits and wrestling in. And then um, Fridays are strength and conditioning. Weekends, like to chill, hang out. But in the meantime, Monday through Friday, I always like to get at least w- one little light lift in because mm. – Obviously, with all these knockouts, they don't come from just technique. They come from having that extra pop, that extra power. And I feel like me lifting weights is kind of what separates me. But, of course, it balances out because I'm still running my three miles and I'm still getting my cardio in. Do you feel as you grow, as you get older, because you're still a young man, that you're going to get more power in your punches, in your kicks? Oh, yeah, for sure. I I can definitely tell from I've been fighting since 17 to now my body's definitely changed and I'm – I guess, filling into that manly figure of mine. And, oh, yeah, for sure. I can definitely see myself in the future moving up to 45, 55, and uh, running those divisions as well. But for now, we're we're still sticking to 35 and um, just getting after it here. Yeah, 35 seems like it has become one of the craziest divisions in the in the UFC and and you know you as a young guy coming up you see those guys there they're like maybe 4 years ahead of you that's kind of like the age range of the guys right now that are at top of the division when you look at them you know what i mean you're like oh you know they're there i'll be there at that age do you see that uh in a sense yeah but i'm try- i'm trying to get after it now you know each day goes by, you're definitely not getting any younger, you're giving an older. And I feel at the place I'm at in my life right now, I have everything coming together for me. Mm-hmm. Even though the world's going through this crazy pandemic with the corona and everything else, I feel like it's it's a, it's a big blessing to me because I get to ultimately focus on myself and train harder than I ever have. So I, I wouldn't like to wait four years. I'd like to get in there now. And like you mentioned, 135 is definitely a stacked divi- division. But I know once I make it, I'm definitely going to be making some noise in there, man, for sure. All right. Well, you know, there's a, there's different approaches. That's why I ask you. Some guys mm-hmm. will want to get in there and, and build themselves up. They You know, they take their time because, you know, they got time. But you, you're like, hey, I don't care if I'm still young. I want to get in there and, and crack some heads like right now is just anybody is ready I'll, oh, I'll take oh, them yeah. on oh yeah for sure like i always say i mentioned man i'm a fighter man i love mm-hmm. to fight and anywhere anytime any place any weight man i'm, I'm down dude I'm, I'm all game for sure all right so so a short notice fight is not out the question for you then because that's where i jumped in he was supposed to be on the contender series mm-hmm. yeah for sure it's it's definitely not out the question but again, like we mentioned, it said that 135 division is so stacked. So it's it's understandable for them to, I guess, make me earn my stripes and go through the contender series, which I'm definitely willing to do. But if that short notice call definitely uh, pops up, I'm more than more than down for it. We do, we were talking off, you know, before the interview about your background, and you, you grew up mostly in Texas, but you used to go back to Hawaii, and you know Hawaii has fighters on top of fighters it's 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 paradise but it's like a paradise of killers out there what was your experience you know visiting hawaii did you feel the fighting culture out there i got to i got to train a little bit yes sir um every so or actually at least every december or summertime i try to go out there and 
it's definitely a different vibe, a different atmosphere. I didn't get to fully train and spar and roll like how I usually do over here, but I'm hoping when I go back this year, I can definitely experience that and uh, get some good work in. Cause again, like you said, there's some killers out there, man. And just like we talked about Texas being, having a lot of fighters I know over there has choke fighters, a lot of them, man. You know, I look forward to seeing you either on the Contender Series or, or in your debut for the UFC. Uh, that is the, the next logical step for you. Thank you so much, man, for the time. And uh, hopefully next time we speak, you're making your debut. Yes, sir. I appreciate you. Thank you for giving me the time. And yeah, for sure, we will be making our, my debut for sure.